All right, welcome to the HER Digital Asset Podcast, where we interview thought leaders in the crypto and blockchain space and the digital space as a whole. Today, we're excited to have Elena Magbontai, a senior in Mapuri University, Philippines, and a team leader and ambassador for Coding Girls Education Program. Thank you for joining us today. How are you doing, Elena? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me here today. I'm quite excited to be part of this podcast. Yeah, thank you for being here. All right, we'll start off with a quick rundown of your backgrounds and experiences and basically how you got into crypto and the digital space as a whole. So currently, I am taking up my bachelor's degree on electrical engineering at Mapuy University, as you said, and I am part of Coding Girls Manila. So in terms of my background in the crypto and blockchain scene, I previously was an intern at SEI Ventures, which is Satoshi Sil Industries. But going back to where I began, my interest in this emerging technology originated late 2016 when I was stumbled upon like projects such as Grid Plus of Consensus, Pro Power Ledger, Energo, and Grid Singularity, which are energy specific projects. And sure. they caught my attention, which made me realize what impact blockchain technology can make in the energy industry as well as other industries. All right, nice. Um, yeah, so we recognize that you help manage an organization called Coding Girls, which is based in Europe, but it's also all over the world. Um, could you tell us a bit more about what that is, its really genesis or how it began, and your main goals as an organization? So Coding Girls Manila, or Coding Girls, I would say, is a nonprofit, women-led, but gender-neutral organization, even though people would say, is it just for girls? But we are devoted to the promotion of an increased presence of girls and women in tech, leadership, and entrepreneurship. Our programs are aimed to prepare young people to become role models of the gen next generation so that we could have the shift shifting of the paradigm and to create a balance in the tech world. And what we do is we deliver a series of events, workshops, and meetups, and these communities and clubs across the world are continuously growing and increasing in number. Sure, yeah. How did you personally get involved with Coding Girls? It was actually like a random situation wherein I was participating at the hackathon by Women Who Code because I'm also part of Women Who Code as a member. And right, right. at that moment, I was invited by... Anna Radulovsky, who founded Coding Girls, to join Coding Girls as one of the team leads. Oh, okay, I see. Nice. Okay, um, just in terms of the digital space as a whole and the ecosystem we live in, which is in the Philippines, um, do you feel that the Philippines has sufficient technological infrastructure and know-how, or otherwise known as general knowledge, to be active members of this coding, digital, and crypto community? I would say that Filipinos are very much talented to be part of this space since we have a lot of developers and hardworking people who could actually participate in trailblazing this industry. Sure, yeah. And uh, you mentioned an organization called Girls Who Code as well. How did you get involved with that or could you speak a bit more about that as well? For Women Who Code, Women Who Code is Women also code, similar to yeah, it's, it's similar to Coding Girls Manila. However, they focus more on study groups and uh, similar similar agenda of promoting diversity and inclusion in terms of women in tech. And But they focus more of on professionals, like people who are already working, who wants to do career change and that kind of thing. Right. Did you um, get into coding or learn coding on your own, or was it a part of a course in Mapua? Um, actually, I was part of the computer club in my high school. So I led the computer club since I was in high school and became the president. So I, wow, okay. I was into coding since I was basically 13 years old. All right, all right, nice. Um, okay, so HER, uh, which is our fund here, was recently part of one of your events uh, in the Block Lab 1.0 initiate. Would you like to talk to us a bit more about what that event was and how it was inspired? And also other events you've been a part of, um, not just with Coding Girls, but on your own, and the potential future you see for Block Lab itself. 
So recognizing the value of blockchain technology, I came to realize that there's a need to educate students about this technology. So essentially, Block Lab is a free conference and exhibition for the empowerment of students, young entrepreneurs, founders, developers, and talents in the fintech and blockchain industry. What we are seeking is to reach those that are in charge of today and tomorrow, which is the youth. For our events, we invite global speakers and exhibitors to share their projects, stories, and visions to students in order to generate awareness and spread education on blockchain technology and its implications. So, like, for example, HGR Digital Asset Group is in line with what we are focusing on, which is educating people about emerging technologies, for this case, blockchain. And this instance, I find that this podcast series is also very educational and that is the very essence of spreading awareness about this nascent tech. <laughs> Thank you, Elena. Um, could you also discuss a bit more about the other events you've really been a part of, um, not just with Coding Girls, but on your own, which kind of has to do with this digital space? Yes, for specifically to blockchain, I have been part of panels in the blockchain space wherein I, I would share my knowledge about how I think blockchain would implicate our future, which I find very valuable in terms of educating people, not just students specifically like Block Lab, but this would be for everyone. And I'm also yeah. part of Women in Blockchain. Right, right. Um, and um, what do you see as a potential future for Block Lab itself? Do you see it continuing soon or... Yes, actually, we have been contacted by multiple universities in order to bring Block Lab to their campuses. Since this campus roadshow, roadshow or initiative offers valuable information for the attainment of bridging the gap in terms of the awareness in this technology. Right. So the industry you seem to be involved in is really um, this focus on education which is really one where we all are more or less allies because we want to educate the general population. Um, so saying that, do you ever feel that there are certain companies or certain parties uh, which you think are competitors or are there, if not, are there obstacles which hamper coding goals or your personal goals um, which you want to accomplish in the space? Well, I would say that there is not much competition at this moment because we're still at the early stages of blockchain technology. So everyone wants to have this synergy and wants to collaborate and work together. I believe that that is a very good good thing. We're at a good stage of the space at the moment, which is a very good start for almost everyone to get into the space. However, I think one of the challenges for educating people in terms of blockchain would still be the hyping and also at the same time would be the mindset of people that is one of the most important things because how people are so used to the processes that they have been accustomed to then that makes them a bit close-minded true true and i'm assuming you face some of those obstacles uh when setting up block lab and working with coding girls as well um yes definitely. right so yeah so how do you see uh, Coding Girls as an organization progressing in the short and medium term? So say five to 10 years from now. So currently we're expanding in Asia since at the moment, Coding Girls Manila is the, Asia, is the only Asia-based club of Coding Girls. And this month, we are establishing two more Coding Girls in different cities which is Kuala Lumpur and Singapore. And that's what we want to do in this time frame, which would be creating clubs in different cities. Like also we're in talks with Taipei and also Thailand in Bangkok. And that would be an expansion of Coding Girls. Right, right. Um, and for yourself now, so putting aside the organization itself, how do you see yourself progressing in the future? Do you have any goals in mind um, with regards to what you personally want to accomplish in this space, and if you really want to stay in this space or branch out to something else? Personally, my passion for engineering and technology is very much in line with the blockchain space because I think that in terms of the energy industry, 
we will benefit a lot from the implications of blockchain and its impacts. So I would very much want to stay in the space and be part of project or create my own project that is geared towards promoting renewable energy since my background is from electrical engineering. Right, right. And you mentioned earlier on, you looked at things like Power Ledger and other uh, technologies which help out in this energy industry. Um, I'm not sure if you can, but do you remember or do you have any in mind which you think are particularly interesting, which our audiences could take a look at? I think the interesting projects would be, for example, Grid Plus, they're doing peer-to-peer energy trading. And it's uh, such the same as Power Ledger and Energo. And even Energo set up their own project here in Manila, which is at the LSU. I think it's very much beneficial to the energy industry, especially for renewable energy technology, since it right. will accelerate its applications. Right. Are you looking to partner with any other official organizations or government bodies to help you almost expand the knowledge on the space? Actually, I'd like to mention that our official partner for events now would be Block Chats, since they are very much in line with what Block Lab is doing. And of course, at the moment, we are in talks with different universities in order to bring Block Lab in their campuses. Right. For our, for our listeners here on our podcast, could you give us a rough uh, description of what Block Chats is? So Block Chats is similar to Block Labs. We They organize events for blockchain companies, wherein like blockchain companies would showcase what their products are or services and it brings knowledge about blockchain technology as well in the coming month actually there would be like a series of events crossfire pitching pitching events and also at the end of this month there is an event here in manila and also in kuala lumpur which would be about e-commerce and blockchain and i will be part of their panel Okay, nice, nice. Um, so assuming, of course, in the Philippines and all over the world, there are many young girls and guys wanting to get involved in not just the digital industry, but the coding as well. What do you think are the first steps to really getting involved here and to help almost expand their interest and then develop it? I would say for my experience or background, it would be doing research, like how to right. start and attending events because through attending events and meetups, it would be very ins- inspiring to see all these people who are already in this space. And you can actually ask for advice from them and maybe even find a mentor. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, I think you mentioned a bit about this earlier on, but what do you think are really the greatest challenges in educating people um, in this industry, both digital and crypto spaces, but also the challenges that you face on a personal level while you were coming up in this space? That's a very good question. And the thing is, it it was kind of funny at first, (laughs) like when people were like asking me, what is blockchain? In my experience, I wanted to create a use case for my specialization in university on blockchain about its implications with energy. But my professor, for instance, the first question that came out from from him was what's blockchain it was actually quite funny since for me i expect professors to know about blockchain since it's an emerging technology so people usually think it's more related to just bitcoin without right. realizing the potential of the technology itself so constantly you have to explain and and give them concrete examples or use cases so that they would be able to understand how this could affect our future. Sure, yeah, makes sense. Uh, Elena, do you have any final takeaways for our listeners today? Anything um, you want to almost say for them to look forward to or to look coding girls or maybe yourself up, anything like that? So to everyone who's listening, if you're in Manila or if you'll be in KL or Singapore, coding girls is always welcome to have people who are who are interested to learn coding who are already coders and everyone who is 
who just wants to be in the tech scene. And for Block Lab, we are going to have uh, multiple events this coming months, and we hope that you would support our events. Sure, yeah. All right, Elena, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and thank you to all our listeners who are listening to our podcast again. Uh, please keep a lookout for our future episodes where we interview more thought leaders on really food for thought in the blockchain and crypto space as a whole. Thank you again, Elena, and thank you viewers and listeners, and uh, we will see you again soon.